Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And you can share with a friend if you enjoy it and subscribe so you're notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. Many homes have kitchens just like this, very small and a little out of date. We're about to change that. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford, the voice of home improvement with projects, tips, and ideas to help you improve your home. This kitchen was remodeled about 35 years ago, and they did a fairly good job in utilizing what little bit of space they had, but there's a few deficiencies in here we're going to correct in the course of the renovation. One of the first ones we have to deal with is an electrical panel that's hidden away in a cabinet. Never a good idea. You really need full access to any sub-panel that you have inside your home. We'll take care of that. Another thing, this is valuable space to be housing just a water heater. This would make a great pantry or other storage area that'll be relocated as well. And carpet in a kitchen, it doesn't hold up very well. You can see the condition of this definitely needs to be replaced. But to make the kitchen larger, we'll be removing this wall and bringing it back to right in here and establishing a new wall. Plenty of room for a washer and dryer, nice entryway from the back. It's going to make a big difference in this kitchen. Stay with us. You can tell a lot about the history of a home when you start tearing out walls. This apparently was the original back wall to this home and probably this opening was the back door. Now you can see the studs here, you can even see some of the black roofing stuff that was used on the outside of the home and then the original wood siding which is called a Novelty 105 siding. And apparently this was just a little back porch that over the years had been enclosed into living area and they just put paneling up right over the siding itself. Now with all of this wood in this wall and this wall being the one that's being completely removed, we've got a lot of wood to remove, a lot of countertops, cabinets and flooring before we can start improving this area of the home. First Mark and the guys pull out the trim around the cabinets and counters to make removing these large components a bit easier. The panel fur down above the cabinets also has to be removed, but fortunately it only conceals a few wires and with it gone, the cabinets come out pretty easily. In a kitchen this size, you have a crowd if more than two people are working at once, so the rest of the guys focus on peeling down the beadboard paneling in the laundry area to get down to the bare studs. Boy, what a difference one day makes on a renovation project like this. The guys have already completed all of the demolition and the framing of the new walls to define the space that we're allocating here. Now we have a nice size kitchen and a sufficient size laundry area that we'll have our washer and dryer on this side and on the other side of this space we're solving a problem we had earlier with the water heater being in the kitchen. It'll now be in this newly constructed closet. We already have the drywall in place and already our plumbers hustling really hard in order to get the new water heater in because you can leave a homeowner without hot water for a few hours but that has to be finished by the end of the day. Also our carpenters are finishing up framing up a doorway that'll tie in this back entryway into the adjacent bedroom and they've completed all of the framing on the new pantry closet. Now this is a very cost effective way of obtaining pantry storage is by framing it up and later we'll be putting in standard shelving in here. This is a lot cheaper than trying to obtain the same type of storage using cabinetry. Now here's another task that we need to take on very soon and that's relocating this menagerie of wires and fuses and breakers to the outside wall. That'll free up this problem that we had previously. So the next person we need to see out on the job is our electrician. Moving the primary electrical panel to the outside will make the inside of the kitchen more functional. We're also achieving more functionality inside by eliminating one of the windows from the kitchen and covering it on the outside with a fake shutter created from plywood, a little window molding, and some lattice strips. The exterior transformation is all complete with the exception of a little bit of painting that needs to be done on our fake window panel. Now this is a great way to close off a window, but also it solves a problem that we would have in matching the vinyl siding that's on the rest of the house. That should work out great. Now on the electrical work, quite a bit of work has been done here with all this electrical and not only does this make it a lot safer for the home, we have plenty of room for expansion if the homeowner needs that later on. Hey, let's see how things have changed inside. 
Boy, this looks a lot better now that the drywall's up and covering up all the old wood, the studs, the wiring, and the plumbing that's behind the walls. It also looks a lot bigger and brighter now that the drywall has been installed and finished. Now, our next step, cabinets and trim work, including the doors, but before we do that, we'll have to cut out this old cased opening that originally was there. We drywalled right over it so that we can minimize the transfer of any dust or noise into the rest of the house. Well, cabinets are next, right after this simple solution. It's time for this week's simple solution from home repair expert Joe Truini. Brought to you by Craneboard. Nothing else is solid core. Nothing else is Craneboard. Let's see, Joe, a uh, pink string and a bag of flour. Uh, you got me concerned here. Yeah, this looks more suspicious than it actually is. This is a great trick for laying out either a, a patio or a sidewalk or any outdoor area where you have to dig out and you want uh -huh. a perfectly straight line to dig along. So it's just a series of stakes and a really tight string and then you sprinkle flour right along the string so it gives you an outline of where to dig, exactly where to dig your trench. Well, I'll tell you, when we've used strings like this before, uh, you almost always end up cutting it with a shovel or a pickaxe right. if you or use knocking it. the stake and then the right. line's out of the way. So this way, this, if you leave this string up just to sprinkle the flour, then you can move it. That's a great idea. And here's the other side of the sidewalk, which is perfectly parallel with the first string. And you just sprinkle flour from a can right along, right on top of the string. And this stuff's real cheap, isn't it? It is, just white flour and mason's line. Mm -hmm. okay. And what about from there on now? What are you planning on? Well, here, we didn't want the whole sidewalk to be perfectly straight and angular. We wanted it to follow the curve of this shrub. So what we're going to do is use a garden hose to mark where we need to dig. Oh, I see. And then you just, what, just shake it right on top yeah. of it? First, you get a nice pleasing shape, whatever works. And you sprinkle it right along the hose. And you'll see when you lift up the hose. Oh, that's great. Nice, easy place to dig. This is always an exciting time when our cabinet installers make it out to the job. Now, this kitchen really isn't that large and it doesn't have a lot of cabinets in it, so it shouldn't take the guys long. This first cabinet covers an entire wall all at once. That's an advantage of custom-made cabinets. They're made to fit exactly into the space available. On the opposite wall, the guys began by setting the corner unit first so that the adjoining cabinet that follows can line up with and attach to the corner cabinet. These prop sticks Ron is using are great for holding the cabinet in place temporarily until he's happy with the level. Even though he's working from a level line on the wall, he'll check and recheck the level before he screws the cabinets tight to the studs. A few more trips to the truck for the base cabinets and the cabinet work is nearing completion. In this case, the laminate countertops were also fabricated by the cabinet maker, so Ron begins putting them in place as soon as the cabinets are done. With cabinets and countertops done, we only need to hang a little bit of trim before the painter goes to work. Right on the heels of our trim carpenter were our painters to apply a coat of primer to all of the bare wood we have in this kitchen. And there's really quite a bit with all of the shelving that was installed in the little pantry closet. Now Ron, our painter's in the process now of putting caulk around all the door jams and doing the final preparations so that two additional coats of paint can be put on all of the trim. Always a good idea anytime you're dealing with bare wood. A primer and two finished coats. Now we'll also be putting two finished coats of paint on all of the drywall. Now you can paint all of the walls in a kitchen before cabinets are installed and a lot of painters prefer to do it that way but in the process of installing cabinets it's almost inevitable that there's going to be a few dings and dents which will require quite a bit of work so other painters prefer just go ahead and let the cabinet man do his thing. They can come back in, cover up sufficiently and paint everything just one time. Well after they complete their work, which should be later today, then we'll be ready for our vinyl floor to be installed. Now the important thing about a vinyl floor is that you have a very smooth and sturdy subfloor to lay it over. Now before we had a little bit of a problem with the floor here and it just really wasn't as smooth and as straight as we needed, so we installed a quarter inch underlayment over the existing floor, nailed it off real well so that when the flooring contractor comes out, they'll do a real extensive cleaning. Then they'll use a floor patch compound, very similar to the same process that drywall finishers use to finish drywall. And they'll take care of all of their seams to smooth everything out, let it dry, a little bit of sanding. Then they can put down virtually just one sheet of vinyl to cover the entire floor. That's our next step. 
Floor patch is often used to level out low places and subfloors, but in this case, its purpose is to fill in smaller voids like seams and nail holes that might show up as depressions in the finished vinyl floor. When the sheet vinyl is put in place, the rough cuts are made around the edges so that it can be pushed down tight for the closer cuts. When the cuts are made, the vinyl is rolled back out of the way and the adhesive is applied with a V-notch trial which leaves the glue looking like it's been combed. Now the flooring is rolled back in place and pressed down to ensure consistent contact so that the glue holds it securely in place. Our flooring contractor did a great job on the installation of our sheet vinyl floor. Now sheet vinyl can be a little tricky to install because it's installed in a large sheet so you have to be very careful not to tear it when you're laying it down. Now one of the advantages is that very thing is that it is one sheet. You don't have all these cracks and crevices like you may have in other types of flooring that can really accumulate the dirt over the years. Another advantage is that you can have an expensive looking floor like ceramic for a third of the cost and the grout joints here, you never have to worry about them getting cracked or staining like some ceramic tile floors can do. Now this is just one way to keep the budget under control when you're remodeling your kitchen. I'll share with you a few more right after our best new product of the week. Let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product. Anytime I'm in the home center looking at some of the electronic stud finders, there's always a new one on the market. This one from Zircon is called the Multi-Scanner I-700, and it does just about everything. Now, one of the main things it will do is find the exact precise center of a stud, which is very important because some stud finders find only the edge of the stud for you. Well, this one does that as well, finding the edges and identifying the direction and the edge of the stud. Also, it'll provide you auto depth sensing so that you know exactly how thick the wall is up to an inch and a half deep. And other scanners may get a little confused when they're scanning over a stud. This one automatically and continuously recalibrates itself so that it points in the direction of the nearest stud. It has so many other features, I can't even hardly mention all of them. It does have an on and off switch for safe usage, but it automatically will turn on as soon as you touch the wall. It has a little button that allows you to put an erasable mark on the wall and it can easily be removed later. I mean, if you're looking for a stud finder that's much, much more than that, you might consider this one. It's around $75. After our vinyl floor was installed, it didn't take long to complete this entire kitchen and the homeowners have already moved in and started enjoying the new space. Now after the floor was complete, we had a little bit of paint touch up, then we were ready to install all the appliances. Now I mentioned earlier how you can save a fair amount of money by going with a vinyl floor instead of a more expensive type floor like ceramic or wood or some of the other floors that are available out there. Here's a few tips on buying appliances. Now to go with a freestanding range like this allows you to save a good bit of money instead of buying separate stove top and built-in oven. You can save as much as 50% and it's a lot more of a space saver by combining them all in one. The same goes for a range, and range hood and microwave. When you combine them, it's less expensive less money for the electrician and it does save a good bit of space and you still have all the modern conveniences that really motivate you many times to remodel your kitchen. Now another way when you're talking about cabinets to save money is to do a little more carpentry work and buy a few less cabinets. Another way we've been able to keep the budget under control for the homeowner is something we mentioned earlier where we built the pantry storage instead of buying cabinetry. Now, we have shelving, we have doors, we have the painting involved here. That cost a little more than $300. If we had tried to accomplish the same amount of storage by using cabinets, it would easily exceed $2,000. And as you can see, he has plenty of room for all of his canned goods and other storage that you would have in a pantry. The cabinets here were built by a local cabinet maker and were pretty modestly priced, but often buying stock manufactured cabinets will help shave the cost from a kitchen renovation. Other factors that will determine the cost of your kitchen cabinets include whether you use wood or other options like MDF, which is medium density fiberboard, which tends to be a bit cheaper. Now another way that you can keep the cost down is to choose a wood that Looks expensive, but really isn't like we've done here. This is a basswood that's far less expensive than other woods that look just like it. 
Now another consideration is the type of doors that you choose because when you look at cabinets, doors really dominate the entire look of the cabinets. This is a raised panel door which is really popular and really dresses up a kitchen but is a little more expensive than other options. Another way to go is to go with a flat panel door which doesn't have the raised panel in the middle and another way to be even more reasonable in the cost of the cabinets is to just simply go with a smooth door. A lot of that's determined by the type of look that you want in your kitchen cabinet, but kitchen cabinets, but that's certainly a way to control the cost. Another thing to keep in mind, your hardware. Now, it may seem very innocent to choose a nice hardware that um, maybe cost a little bit, but you gotta consider an average kitchen may have 30 to 50 of the handles or pulls that can drive the cost up. Now another thing to consider very closely is how many different accessories that you have installed as part of your kitchen cabinets. Now something like this is a great space saver where you have your trash can that just tucks out of the way, but this cabinet costs a good bit more than a regular cabinet, but you kind of have to balance it out by the amount of space that you're saving. A great space saver is one directly below the sink where you have a little pull-out tray like this. Now this can add a little bit to the cost, but boy is it convenient to utilize all the space you have down below the sink like that. So all of these factors need to be considered so that you can keep your kitchen budget where you want it. Now a surface like the floor is of course the biggest surface that you have in the kitchen, but the second biggest surface is the countertop. So careful consideration there is very important too. Now this is a plastic laminate countertop, one of the more reasonable countertop selections that are out there. And this is basically constructed using a fairly good grade of smooth plywood and then the plastic laminate is attached using contact cement. And it has a nice edge, it has a backsplash and will stand um, a fair amount of abuse for a long, long time. But there's actually even a cheaper alternative in plastic laminate called post form. These are the countertops with the backsplash already attached that you may have seen in home centers. They can be mitered at corners so that the whole kitchen can be completed quickly and inexpensively. Next, around the yard. Let's head outside for around the yard with lawn and garden expert Tricia Craven Worley. If you do a little gardening around your home, it's not unusual to have a few seeds left over from the year before or maybe the year before <laughs> that. But to determine if the seeds are any good before you plant them, Trisha has a great idea. Well, I do, Danny, and, and I'm one of those people that has seeds from all sorts of years. And, <laughs> and as a gardener, sometimes we gardeners exchange seeds and just put them in a little envelope. Sure. So here's a really easy way to test to see if they're any good. Okay. I just filled this uh, pan with a little bit of water, mm -hmm. and I'm going to pour these seeds in here. You know, and you can do this with any seeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you do is you leave them overnight, and the seeds that are good, that actually will germinate, will drop to the bottom of the pan. I see. And what's really nice is the ones that aren't any good, you can just skim right off the top. I can see where something like this would be fun to do with the kids, too. Oh, it would be really fun to do with the children. I always love to encourage children working in the garden, and this is a really, really fun one. Now, I assume that um, the next morning after you separate the good and the bad seeds, you probably need to plant them pretty quickly then. Yes, you better plant them because otherwise they might spoil or, uh, or turn. And uh, the other thing is, when you are soaking them in water like this, it really does help the germination process, just like you would soak a bare root tree overnight or something like that. So get them in the ground and I think they'll turn out real well. Good. From the beginning, our budget was fairly modest on this kitchen renovation, but the results really don't show it. The kitchen we started with was small, old, and in need of an update, plus there were several problems that had to be remedied. We relocated the electrical panel outside, created a new closet to house the water heater, and installed an inexpensive but very attractive vinyl floor. By moving a wall back a few feet, we doubled the size of the room and added some beautiful cabinets that made it functional and attractive. We were even able to install all new matching appliances as a result of the owner's good budget choices. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.